Brad and Karen and Shirley. Once again, thank you so much for joining us, whether the few that are here this morning helping uh, produce us and get it online, and those of you at home, thank you for joining us this Sabbath morning. And this Sabbath, uh, just before Thanksgiving, a time to be thankful, right? I appreciated your story, Stephanie, because I could relate to that, but overwhelmed at times with negative thoughts and feeling sorry. Oh, yeah. Happy Sabbath, Erlene. I'm at home doing this. Um, and yet, we're supposed to be thankful. And there's, but we look around and we think there's a lot of reasons not to be thankful. This Happy year, Sabbath, Dan. A difficult year. But, yeah, uh, I'm at home. I'm broadcasting from home. It's really about family. Boy, if you can't get together with family, uh, it hurts. But we have other things to be thankful for. Oh, on for. Zoom, okay. God has blessed us in a whole lot of ways. I'm you sorry know, I missed the Sabbath did, school. I did. Uh, I should have gone to church to do it. Historical origins, right? I mean, you've read that. In I'm taking this off the computer. The, all of those, the Native Americans all getting together. But really, it's come down. Thanksgiving is all about eating, <laughs> isn't it? It's about food. It's about turkeys. And, you know, it's, yeah, fake turkeys, whatever. Whatever you like on your table, it, it's about that. And then... You know, it seems like society is such that as important as food is in a lot of home circles, Thanksgiving's really about the day after Thanksgiving. Black Friday. Buying things. I didn't think I had to early, and I should have gone. I stayed home because there was no church. But I may go next week just to broadcast it. by the wayside. And we've lost... You know, as a, as a society, it seems like we've even lost the talent and the ability to send thank you notes. Um, they said we had no church, so I stayed home, but I thought I could broadcast it off the computer. It works well, that, just that as well. The ability to say thank you has uh, been diminished in a lot so of So I'm just times. holding it up so with my hand, broadcasting off the computer. Some stories from the Bible, some historical events that took place, and how people praised and thanked. It uh, works. No what the circumstances were that they were were facing. I want to look at this verse that starts us off. It says here, you might uh, be familiar with this verse, right? First Thessalonians oh, thank you. 5.18. This really applies to other people, right? This doesn't apply to you. This is for those other people. It says, in what? Everything. In everything, give thanks. Right. But it doesn't apply to you. It really is, like I said, it's for the other people because they've got things to be thankful for and you and I, well, we've just got problems. And God doesn't expect us to be thankful for problems, does he? Thank you, Karen. Yes, he does. And we're going to look at that. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ concerning everyone. Be thankful, no matter what comes. Be thankful for the outcome politically. And, and that, that's a hard thing. We should be thankful because God's in charge and, and whether we agree with it or not. Well, he's saying, be thankful. How do we do that? We're going to look this morning and see how can we be thankful even for things that we don't, uh, you know, initially come along and say, well, I like that if it pleases me. Let's look. Let's look at some examples from the Bible. In Luke chapter 1 and 2, you have the story of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Can you imagine what it was like to be a young woman? And we have some young women in our church. And can you imagine socially what it would be like to be a young single woman and find yourself pregnant? Such things happen. And, and how embarrassing and how shameful and certainly in this society where Mary was you know just socially just I, I can't imagine how awful that would be in some circumstances it could even be a death sentence oh, you had a speaker oh awesome and yet what did Mary do when she uh, realized happy Sabbath Cheryl I'm awesome doing this from my home and giving her this child because we're closed she embraced it, and, and she began to praise. And you can go and you can read this story here 
And you might want to do that as we come to the Christmas season. Read Luke chapter 1 and 2. Mary has quite a long passage there in Scripture recorded where she gave Happy praise. Sabbath, Cheryl. Praise to God. Good to see you. Thank you for coming Was in. Was it easy for her? You see, we see all the good things in Scripture. We you read the story and, and the wise men and you know, all of the things. I'm sorry. That, Oops, I'm we sorry. I, I didn't mean to do that. Picture of Mary and Joseph Holding and it Jesus. up. Him. And we see all the pretty things about it. And we don't always stop to think of the difficult the shame, the embarrassment, the looks, the ridicule, ridicule, the, the comments that people were making behind her back, or maybe even to her face. And, and it was not always easy, not an easy thing. And yet she was able to praise. I believe that God gives us circumstances and situations that are good for us, that, that God takes us down a road, he gives us um, a burden sometimes to bear, sometimes it's, it's a blessing, however you look at it, God takes us on a journey that we may not always understand, and we may not see at the beginning what the end is going to be, and the people around us may not understand where God is taking us, but we have to be like Mary and say, God, I don't know why you chose me. I don't know why me, but thank you. And Mary put trust in God and said, I trust God that you're going to be with me and you'll take me through this. It didn't make sense to the people around her. They didn't understand. And you may be on a journey, you know, you may be on a journey that doesn't make sense to you or the people around you. You may be going uh, through difficulties and you say, I don't know why. Put your trust in God and give thanks because God asks us to. He doesn't say, enjoy your difficult times. He says, trust me, thank me because I will never leave you, never forsake you and I will take you through and we're going to make it through here. And, and Mary said, my soul exalts the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced. I, in God, I should have capitalized that, sorry, but in God, my Savior. Able to give thanks, even in situations that other people don't totally understand, we ourselves may not understand. Give thanks in all situations and circumstances. We thank God because we trust him, That's what Mary did. She trusted God, and so she was able to give thanks. I wish that we would be able to do just the same thing. How about Mary Magdalene and her story here in Luke 17? Um, the Bible says that, well, let's just go to this verse. It's really, you're familiar with it. Behold, there was a woman in a city who was a, what? Sinner. This is, you know, telling, recounting the experience of Jesus in this room, this social gathering. And suddenly, beside the chair, the lounge chair where Jesus was stretched out, suddenly appeared a woman who was known in the community as a sinner. A shameful embarrassing, uh, looked down upon uh, history in this woman's life. Here was this woman, Mary Magdalene, I believe. Here was Mary, and she was standing behind him. He was reclining with a group of people, and, and Mary was there at his feet, and she was doing weeping at his feet. Tears were coming down. And what did she say? And I, you probably don't know, and you don't have your Bible, and that's okay, but you can look at this later in, Matthew, in Luke 7. There is no recorded conversation of Mary at the feet of Jesus. No, no conversation. It says, Mary, a sinner. And it doesn't go into details. You can fill in the details in your life because you and I are sinners. 
and we can look at our past and we can see our mistakes and our faults and our shortcomings and the shameful things that we've been caught up in and, and maybe we've been a good person all our life but those inside thoughts and the things that go through our, our mind and our hearts that are still offensive to God. We've been there. We know what it's like. We are that person. And when we truly see the sinfulness of our life and how far we are from God, only then do we understand the gift of God when he comes and says, I forgive you. I forgive you. And extend that forgiveness, that grace. I, I know it's kind of going in and out, but that's good. Mary stood at his feet and she wept. And she and did she express thanks that come out of her mouth? No. No thanks came out of her mouth. And I believe there's a lesson for us. There are times when our pain is so deep and our appreciation for what God has done for us, our thanks for the gift of forgiveness and salvation, it overwhelms us. There are times when we do not have the words to express thanks to God. We don't even know how to say it. We don't know what to say. But our actions can show it. Here, Mary's actions were weeping. Sometimes your actions may be just something between you and God and, and just you know, he can he can read our hearts but sometimes your actions may be in in giving of your time and energy to somebody else and that's your expression of thanks um, there used to be a time when I first became started attending the Adventist church that uh, bank offerings were a big thing they'd make a big thing out of it up front does anybody have a bank offering they'd like to bring this morning and a special little place where they collect it. But that it, in the past has been a way that people give thanks. Thank you, God. Something special that God has done in, in their life, and they would bring a monetary gift just to say, yes, Lord, thank you for what you've done. It doesn't always have to be words. Sometimes our actions for God, towards others, would be an expression of that thanks. How about the lepers in Luke 12? How many of the lepers who were healed were thankful? One. Uh, pardon, Rick? I, that's my assumption. Yes, it talks about the one. My assumption is that they all ten of them were thankful. They were glad that they were healed. And they were rejoicing. And, and there again, in our society today, we cannot understand and comprehend totally what it means to have leprosy. Not only the physical uh, deterioration of your body and, and the ugliness of, of that, but it, even worse than that is the social isolation. And maybe I could say we kind of do understand that these days with COVID-19 and all those things going around. Uh, if you should um, happen to test positive, you are going to be socially isolated. And, and you might understand a little bit of what it was like to have uh, leprosy. Jesus came and he healed the ten. And I think they were all excited, all happy, all thankful. And they all started running back home to the town or wherever it was. But one turned back and came to Jesus. He came in his presence and knelt down and, and expressed Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for healing me. And Jesus well, looked at you, that man for the super and he hearts. said to him, Thank you very much. Your faith has made you whole. Now, maybe Jesus was just talking about here's how the healing process took place. I wonder, though, if God at that moment extended an extra healing to that man. The others were physically healed, and they ran to town. The nine ran to town. This one came back and expressed gratitude and thanks. And Jesus said, your faith in me, you're coming back to me, coming to me, because you trust me, you believe me, you acknowledge me as the healer, because you have faith in who I am. 
I extend to you an additional healing. I heal you not only physically, I heal you spiritually. Your faith in me has made you spiritually whole. And so God not only wants to heal us physically, and we do, we pray for people, and we anoint people that need healing, but what we truly are after is you pray for loved ones, yes, you want them to be healed, but more than the physical healing, we pray for their spiritual healing, that they are whole in their heart and ready uh, to meet the Lord in the air when he should come. And I believe that's going to be soon. So thanks. Uh, thanks is, is not just a, an outward appreciation. It is an attitude of the heart, a healing of us inside. Being grateful, as our opening text was in First Thessalonians, in all circumstances. Thank you. Thank you. Second Chronicles chapter 20, one of the great, great historical moments uh, recorded in the Bible. Jehoshaphat and his army, he was the king and, and the army, they were uh, prepared to go out and meet the enemy. This massive army that had come up around them, and as they assembled their army and prepared to march out of the city walls, who did they send out first to head out in that army? They sent singers. The praise team went out first, and they, they went ahead of the army. And uh, let's see what the text says on that, but I head down. Second Chronicles 20, 21. This choir that went out before the army, and they said, give what? Give thanks to the Lord, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Once again, you know, this picture is of, of an army preparing to go to battle. And, and these days, when you go to war, you know, somebody's sitting at a computer in California, and they are controlling with a little joystick a drone, you know, thousands of miles away, and they push a, bu a button, and somebody fires a missile, whatever, and they take out an enemy. You know, it's distant. It's far away. You know, even our, our close combat is not so close because you know, you're using rifles, 50 caliber, as a range of, I don't know, a mile at least, and I don't know, longer than that. But whatever, it's, it's distant. These guys were prepared to go to battle, and it was face to face, hand to hand. And there was going to be a lot of carnage and a lot of death. And, and war always has been and always will continue to be an ugly thing. It is no fun. And I pray a blessing for our young people who are in the military and facing um, combat in different parts of the world. The world is in conflict and it's in chaos. And we need to remember and lift up our young people that are serving. We appreciate our, our veterans too. But here was this army preparing to go out. And the point I'm making is we read the story, we know the end of the story, and so it all makes sense and it's all wonderful. It's a fantastic story. We know the end. They did not know the end of the story. They were marching out. A lot of them, I think, you know, certainly the, the first guy in the line, the soldier, you know, he's the first guy that's going to be out there at the very front. They, they had to look at it and think, I probably not going to come home tonight. Most likely, I, I could die today. And that's what they were facing when they went to battle. But the army sent out the choir, and the choir started singing, Give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness. They were marching out to their death, and they're singing, Thank you, God, for your loving kindness. Can we do that? Can we get up and go to work knowing that people don't like us or that the, the work situation is tough or difficult or, or wherever you go, can you go face people that spiritually are coming against you? Can you go face people that, that are in whatever way you might see them as an adversary 
And you can go into that situation and say, praise the Lord, because you are faithful and you will go with me. Whatever your sentence is, you may get up in the morning and your finances are the enemy. You may get up in the morning and your health is the enemy. And you say, I don't know how I'm going to make it through this day. But praise the Lord, your love and your faithfulness is sufficient and you'll get me through. That's, that's what it's talking about. This example of thankfulness is telling us that even though we don't know the end of the story, we don't know what how it's going to work out, even though it looks pretty grim and even though it looks like it, it could be bad for us, this circumstance, this situation that we're in, we are still able to say, Lord, I put my trust in you. I don't know the outcome, but I know you. And you're going to take care of me. And whatever the outcome, it's going to be okay because you're in charge for it. That's the kind of trust that I want to have that I hope that, that we each will have. How about... Uh, the story here in 1st Samuel, chapter 1, 26 through 28. The story of Samuel, uh, his mom. Let me get to the right page here. With uh, Elkanah and Hannah and, and what was the other wife? Uh, Peniah. Here's certainly a situation that Thankfully, we're not in husbands. We don't have two wives. And so we're not faced with this situation here. It's an interesting story, though, where um, Elkanah, it sounds like, was a compassionate, loving husband who had two wives. And Benaiah was able to have children, but Hannah was not. And it says, Benaiah did what to Hannah? was rude to her, made fun of her, irritated her, deliberately went out of her way to make life tough for that woman. Yeah, probably. Well, we may not be in situations probably. where we're, you know, men. And, I didn't think about going and, and doing it there. So I figured so I could do it at home just as well. Side, and I would look and i say, do you know anybody that makes life hard for you? You know anybody that irritates you? As long as it gets you know done, as long as I tape it, it doesn't matter if I do it at home or there. Difficult, whether it's at work or maybe a family member or a neighbor. Somebody that irritates you just knows how to push those buttons. Anna went to the temple and she started praying and she said, Lord, I need help. I need you to hear me. And, and I just, I plead, Lord, for an answer. Save me from this dilemma that I'm in. And her husband uh, cared about her, knew her pain. And when they would go up to uh, the temple to the Shiloh to sacrifice, the husband would give Paniah food, you know, from the offering, a portion. And he'd give a double portion to Hannah because of the double portion of her pain and her suffering and all that she was going through. Trying to be compassionate, trying to help her. She had a needed the help that God gave her. God heard her, her answer, or her plea, and gave her an answer, and gave her a beautiful young son, Samuel. And she raised that young son, and when the child had been weaned, um, some say that weaning is not just through with breastfeeding, you know, but weaned as in ready to be on his own. He could have been a little bit older. She took him to the temple and put him in the service of God. And then she gives thanks. She says, Anna prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord. And then she goes on with this long prayer that more than we could put on the screen. But she rejoiced because God had blessed her. And she took the blessing that she had all of her life, all of her, her adult life, she had prayed for an answer. Lord, I want a child. I need a child. And God gave her a child. And what did she do with that blessing, that answer? She dedicated him to the Lord. Took him to the temple, put him in God's service. 
Another lesson that comes from this, thanks, I believe, is that God gives us blessings, not just for our own satisfaction, but for whose? His, to his glory. And, and to be a blessing to others. And so when God blesses you, whatever it is, however God blesses you, I believe that we have a, the privilege and the responsibility to say, Lord, thank you for this gift. Now, Lord, what do you want me to do with it? Is it for me alone? Or is there some way I can take this blessing and share it with others? God may have given you, I don't know what, intelligence, talents, abilities. Maybe you've got wealth. I haven't run across any of those in our church yet. But, <laughs> but, but whatever those blessings are that God has given you, I believe we look at that and say, Lord, thank you. Now how can I use it to your honor and to your glory? Is there some way those gifts can be a blessing to others? That's what Hannah did. Thank you for the gift. Now, Lord, here it is. And, uh, and Samuel ended up being an incredible blessing to the nation. One last one here I think we've got. I tried to squeeze a whole bunch in there, and uh, you know, there's just no end to the stories in the Bible of people giving thanks and praise. Here you find Daniel in, in Daniel chapter 6, uh, giving thanks and giving praise. And the story, you know, that Daniel three times a day would pray. And he didn't go and open his window and just brag and flaunt. That was his, his tradition. He would open the window and he would pray toward, towards Jerusalem and he would thank the Lord and praise his name. And when people began to work against him and plot against him and lie about him and try to pass laws and things to trip him up and to get him out of office, you know, he knew people were after him. He didn't change his habits and his relationship with the Lord. He continued to pray. He wouldn't let those people intimidate him or frighten him. He stayed with his with his worship of God. And, and here Daniel, it says, when Daniel, when he knew that these people were after him and plotting against him, he continued kneeling on his knees three times a day, praying and giving thanks before his God. So what do you do when things are not going well? in your life. When, when people are working against you, do we complain? Stephanie, back to your story about, that. Is it 80,000 thoughts a day go through our mind, something like that? Yeah, up to 90. Not up to 90,000 thoughts, and 80% and of those can be negative. Isn't that true? How easily we can get caught up in the negative thoughts about all that's going around us. And Daniel had plenty of reason to, uh, to have his 80% of negative thoughts as people were plotting against him for his destruction. And what did he do? He went and prayed and gave thanks to God. Thank you, God, that you are in charge. Isn't that what we should be doing too? Our, our opening text there, 1 Thessalonians, in all circumstances, give thanks to God. Does that mean that we enjoy what's going on? That it's pleasant? No. It means God's in charge. We acknowledge that he's in charge. We put our life in his hands. We leave the outcome to him. We, we trust God. That's what Daniel was doing. He's trusting God. Here we have a verse in, uh, in Psalms 109. They have spoken against me with what kind of a tongue? They have spoken against me with lying tongue. In return for my love, they act as my accusers. But I am what? But I am in prayer. Have you been lied about before? It is no fun. Because oftentimes, you know, you're in a situation where there's just no way to prove. There's nothing you can do or say to prove that what they're saying is wrong. It's a, an awful situation to be in. David is saying, 
and he's speaking to us this morning. When your life situation is difficult, when circumstances are such that, that are, are painful and you're frustrated and you don't know what to do, and people are not being truthful, truthful about who you are and your motives and your attempts, and all of those things are being questioned, you just need to get out there and get even. Okay, okay, thank you. No, no, but isn't that what we do? We think we start thinking of ways to retaliate and to get even, and, and we start working, 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 working to to make the situation right and to prove that they're wrong and to prove that we're right, and we work hard to prove how right we are and how wrong they are, and we get caught up and we're in that pig pen and we're all getting muddy. The psalmist was saying, when they start lying about me, I start praying. I turn it over to the Lord. I let him fight for me. In all circumstances, I give thanks. I don't like this. I'm not pleased with what's happening. But I'm going to give thanks to you, God, because you're in charge. And the outcome is in your hands. And, and my life is in your hands. That's what he means when he says, in all circumstances, you and I turn to the Lord and let him be our defender. We turn to him and we give him thanks because he has wisdom. We turn to him and give thanks oh, because sorry. he is the one who provides for us and who protects us. He is the one who takes responsibility for our circumstances. And so in this Thanksgiving season, now is the time when things are difficult for us, and they are, it's unpleasant. This whole pandemic thing has gone on longer than we've ever envisioned. Restrictions that we could not have comprehended, and, and it changes our lifestyle, and it is not pleasant. It's the time to thank God, because he's still in charge. That's right. Amen. And we praise and say, Lord, we don't understand. We don't enjoy what's going on. We don't know why it's happening. But Lord, you are in charge. Use us to be a blessing, Lord. Open up new doors and new opportunities for us to meet and to connect with people in ways that we've not done before. Lord, provide for us. Take care of us. And watch God work in amazing ways. It's a time to be thankful for the blessings that we have, but for ways to share with others, for the blessings that have not come to Fruition that yet, you know, the, the end result has not been seen in, in our circumstance. Give thanks because we know the end is in God's hand. And we just trust Him to take care of us. Let's do that, right? Let's have more trust Helena. in the Lord today. Let me close with a prayer. Lord, thank you for this season of Thanksgiving. But Lord, what we really want, uh, not just a uh, a table full of food and people around it, as enjoyable as that is, what we're really after, Lord, is for you to work in our hearts and to give us a grateful heart that we would be quick to return thanks to you for how you work in our life. Teach us to trust you, to depend on you. I need a tripod. As, uh, Holding this up with a hand. And... Well, that though we don't see and understand the end, we trust that you do have our our future in your hands and that you'll take care of us and you'll provide for us. Go with this with this week, Lord, and and the gatherings that we do have, Lord, bless us and keep us safe. We put our praise and thanks before you, Lord, thanking you for our goodness today. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much.